Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Nice Chats with Tobias. What you see here is the ghost fish. This is a uh, sunfish or elephant toenail style of knife. I first saw mention of this about a month ago on Facebook. I think it was Brian Wilhoyt who had mentioned it. And I believe it's Brian Wilhoyt who designed the, um, the ghost fish and also gave it its name. Now what it is, is it's a Rough Rider Reserve knife. So it's one of their upscale knives that they have in the uh, reserve lineup. Uh, and um, well, it's a sunfish pattern or a elephant toenail pattern. Now, typically when a Rough Rider makes a knife with this style of frame, uh, which is kind of an oblong frame. If you notice, the uh, the front bolster is higher than the other bolster. So it's uh, kind of built on a sleeve board frame. And when they're doing knives in this big, thick frame, they typically refer to them as an elephant toenail. Um, Rough Rider makes three similar knives, and two of them they call sunfish, and then one of them they call the elephant toenail. So let me show you here. So here is uh, what they normally refer to as an elephant toenail. Notice it's got that egg shape or that oblong shape where the lower uh, bolster or the bottom of the knife is smaller than the top of the knife. Uh, and that's usually what they refer to as an elephant toenail. Now the sunfish is usually equal end and it's a little longer than the elephant toenail. These are on a three and seven eighths inch frame. This is on like a four and an eighth or four and a quarter inch frame. And then the other knife they have is called the baby sunfish. And that is also equal end, but it's much shorter. It's only three inches long. So they have a baby sunfish, the regular sunfish, and then the elephant toenail. Now this one is built on what is normally called the elephant toenail frame by Rough Rider. The names are interchangeable. Anyone who collects these knives know that a sunfish and an elephant toenail, um, the names are often uh, interchangeable. I've seen numerous knives built like this that are referred to as an elephant toenail. So why not call this one a sunfish? There's no reason not to. Um, and I got a feeling the reason they went with a, a fish name on this instead of an elephant name is the most common thing you would think of right away would be like a white elephant, you know, or a white elephant toe. And that's probably not the best name to give this knife because, uh, well, a white elephant is a gift that you give somebody that is anything but a gift. It usually means that it's going to be a lot more work for them to take care of, or it's something that is not really going to be helpful for them. Uh, instead, they went with the name Ghost Fish, uh, mainly because of it being white, I believe. And I kind of like that name. And I also really like this knife. I think they did a, a spectacular job with this one, the Rough Rider Reserve 040 Ghostfish, which is basically built on an elephant toenail or sunfish frame with an easy open cutout. Now the frame used on this knife was used on an earlier uh, Rough Rider Reserve knife, and that was the Rough Rider uh, 006 Rhino Toe. And I did a review of this knife uh, a while back, and um, I was not at all happy with this knife. Um, and the primary reason I was not happy with it is because of the blade options and the fact that it has a very strong pull on it. And you got this Warncliffe blade, looks great, but I don't feel it uh, is very safe because I just feel like my finger is just always going to be slipping up on that blade. So I have to be very cautious of using it uh, because of that. And also because the Warncliffe blade is kind of short and stubby. And the secondary blade it has on there is this short stubby uh, pin blade. And the handle here, because of the shape of this blade, really does kind of drop your hand right in the path of the blade. So I don't like that, you know. I don't like uh, having my fingers near the sharpened pointy parts. And that was the problem with this knife. 
Um, however, before I even ordered this, when I took some, I looked at it online, you know, because it, it was at the Smoky Mountain Knife Works uh, webpage. I looked at it online, and this is much more uh, in line with your typical elephant toenail. And because of that, um, you'll see here, first of all, the blade opens a whole lot easier than it does on this one. So it's not a weak pull by any measure. It's a very much a right there in the middle, somewhere around, somewhere between four and six. Everyone's going to have a different number for it, but it is definitely in the middle. This one is much stronger, and some people will like that a little bit better see that it still does that rocking this one though it has the rock but it isn't a problem once it's open and what's better is it does have a nice little bit of a choil there with the tang so that if your hand does happen to slip forward it is going to catch there instead of catch the blade uh, which is really nice because i actually quite often we'll put my finger right there on uh, on these uh, elephant toenails when I'm using it because you have control over the blade. You see, you got hands on, or fingers on both sides of the blade. So that blade is not going to be rocking at all anyway. And that is more in line with the way you have it on this knife, the, uh, the normal Rough Rider Reserve, I mean, regular Rough Rider, uh, elephant toenails you have the tang like that uh, the cool thing about this one though is notice the shape of the blade you got a much more um, uh, spear point style of blade going on you definitely have the drop there you've got a really good belly going on also the belly of the blade is larger than what you have on the typical uh, Rough Rider Elephant toenail. So you have a lot more blade surface going on there. Cutting edge is about the same length though, you know. And both of these actually are three and seven eighths inches long. But if you notice with this knife versus this knife, this one has a slightly slimmer design uh, than the, uh, the typical Rough Rider uh, Elephant toenail. So you have that going for you too. It's going to be a little slimmer in the pocket. Think of it as kind of like an anorexic elephant toe. Uh, however, it is not so anorexic that you would consider it a uh, sleepboard whittler or something like that. Uh, now it is only one blade, which uh, helps with the easy open cutout here. And uh, the easy open cutout is in really just the perfect sweet spot. You get it right there. I know you have the nail nick there, so you can open it with the nail nick. And there, if that were the case, you wouldn't need a uh, an easy open cutout. Um, but also, that is a very classic way that they do these things. They have the uh, nail nick still in place. You have the easy open cutout. And what that actually does is it allows you to get a little more grip onto the, uh, the blade. And the cutout actually gives you a little more friction in your fingers. So it's easier to pull this thing open. Now, uh, it does have a lighter pull than this knife. Um, however, it is not that much lighter. I would say this one falls into that uh, four to six spot, so somewhere in the middle. It's a medium kind of pull, whereas this one is a medium to heavy pull. This one's more in the seven, eight category. This one's more in the four to six category. That's the way I see it. And you can hear that uh, lock up. Hear that? That is really sweet. And you got a good lock up on this too, but the walk and talk is not as smooth uh, because of how strong it is. Also, if you look at the uh, lock up on this one, notice how it's coming around. You don't see anything there. It's all buried inside. This one, when it's coming around, you see there? got it sticking out a little bit now it's not sticking out much up here you can see a little bit of it but because it's a little bit higher you end up with a little bit more blade but you still have a really good lockup see how it's going to fit there and slam into there and it locks up really good i really like that lockup 
And also, as you can see here, notice that it's a double backspring going on there. Now, there's a couple reasons you'll want a double backspring on some of these knives. And the good thing about a double backspring is it provides a better strength and, and it is also less likely to break. When you have a really fat backspring on a knife, sometimes it is so stiff that uh, the blade will not open properly. And what's more is when you are opening the blade, the, the spring doesn't want to give as well. And what happens is the spring ends up breaking. So that's a reason why the double back spring is there. The other thing you'll notice is look at how far back the spring uh, or the pin is for the back spring. Notice where it is on the regular elephant toenail. By doing that, you can have a stronger spring in the back there, but not increase the pull on the blade because you have more of the spring actuating whenever you're opening the blade. And the spring doesn't have to move as much, but it will still lock the blade in place. And as for the blade being locked, you can see there, no movement at all, really. Yeah, you do have that little bit of give. Um, and some people are going to complain about that, but I don't see that as a major issue. I've used a lot of slip joints and a lot of slip joints have that, uh, that little bounce there. And that's why a lot of people, whenever you're doing some serious cutting, get it up real close like this. And that is something you can do with this knife, but you can't do with this knife. And this knife also has that give even though it has a stronger backspring, but you definitely can't do this with this knife and give it a really good strong cut. And that's what these knives are really designed for. They are for getting up close and doing some serious cutting through hard, uh, hard stuff. And this one will do that really well because it's got a full flat grind going on with it. And you also can do a lot of, uh, uh, draw cuts with it because of how much how that blade is shaped so it's going to work really good uh, all in all I'm just really pleased with it and you can see there uh, blade alignment is fantastic uh, hardly any gapage at all I do see a little bit of gap here uh, whenever you get the light hitting it just right but my finger doesn't catch on it or anything. It's also well pinned there. You see that four pins on there as opposed to the typical way an elephant toenail is pinned, which is just two pins in the center. This one also has the two pins in the center. This is pinned more like the uh, typical equal end sunfish that have four pins. Uh, and that is also going to help secure those covers on there. I did not mention it yet, but these are actually smooth white micarta uh, covers. Um, you have the nickel silver shield. The pins are also nickel silvered, uh, but the uh, the bolsters here, they are a satin finish and I believe they are stainless steel. You do have the double ring going on there with it though. So that's pretty cool. And the blade still, I believe I did mention, but it is D2 with a satin finish. And you see there's 040 D2 China, and then uh, Rough Rider Reserve. All in all, just a really fantastic knife. Um, came extremely sharp right out of the box. Uh, slicing paper, slicing cardboard, no problem at all with any of that. Got a good range with the blade. All in all, I'm just very, very pleased with this knife uh, to the point that I know I'm going to pick up another one, one for the collection and one for the pocket. Yeah, I am definitely going to be throwing this in a pocket. At three and seven eighths inches long, it isn't too long, but you know, uh, it is still a little bit of a pocket full. Um, however, it is uh, not as wide as this one is. Um, and not as heavy as the one in white smooth bone. Still, I'd like to see this in uh, white smooth bone. And uh, if uh, Rough Rider does do it in white smooth bone, please leave off the shield. Uh, as it is, uh, I think you could probably do some uh, scrimshaw work in the white Mercard on the back, and that'd look pretty cool. So I might even think about doing that. Um, other things that I thought about is when I first received this knife is the fact that uh, it does have a double back spring. So what Rough Rider could do 
is put a spline down the middle there and split that back spring. And if they were to do that, then perhaps they could turn this into a uh, sunfish whittler, uh, make it a, uh, get rid of the easy open cutout and add a uh, add two uh, secondary blades on here, perhaps a, uh, a Warren Cliff and a, uh, a small pin blade, something of that nature, or maybe a, a coping blade and a Warren Cliff or a coping blade and a pin blade, something like that. But turning this into an, uh, an elephant toenail whittler would be pretty cool. The other thing you could do is uh, get rid of the easy open cutout or even leave it in there if you want to. Uh, move the uh, move the spring up a little bit here and put in a lock back on this thing. Have a lock back sunfish. That would be pretty cool with this too. I think that'd be great. But also just having uh, other color options in this and I'd love to see this in stag. That would be really fantastic just as it is, but in stag would be fantastic. In any case, uh, as you can see, I'm pretty excited about this. This is really, even though it's a pretty long look at it, uh, is really my first look at this. I will definitely do another video on this after I've uh, played around with it for a while. But I just wanted to get something out uh, because I know a couple people have already been asking me. So stick around for some slides. I know it's already been long, but uh, hope you enjoyed this and I'll talk to you again soon. Let me take just a second to thank you once again for dropping by and spending a few minutes here at Knife Chats with the Pies. I really do appreciate it and I do appreciate any comments that you leave. So please uh, remember to give me that thumbs up and also don't forget to 
subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is up and running. Thanks again for dropping by. Really do appreciate your time here.